test belongs solely to them. If you decide to act on anything you hear about today, unless it benefits our guests, or us, or both, please leave us out of it. With that covered, let's jump into the world of how did I get here. All our savings, we spent it on her. For the medication alone, the oxygen alone, we spent it. So I was like, God, there's nothing I can do. At that point, I nearly ran away. Yes. Because I nearly left her in the hospital. When I look at my husband, I said, my husband is so caring person. I can't leave him in this condition. I called someone that was close to me. I said, please, can you borrow me 50 cities? The first question she asked me, is your husband not there? I shed tears. It hits me so much. It was so embarrassing. Because, you know, in this life, people feel when you are married, you have it all. So you don't need to be asking on those things. That thing hit me. I was like, no, I can't take it anymore. It's, it's okay. Hello, Joyce. Hi. You're welcome to How Did I Get Here. Thank you so much. It's great meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Shall we begin? Sure. Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Joyce Atomehe. Uh, I'm a fitness instructor, a uh, mother of three, and um, married to a teacher. I'm a half Ghanaian and then half Nigerian. I love singing. I love playing football, volleyball, and uh, eventually, um, a church at Winners Chapel International. I live in Kaswa and um, I eventually uh, married a Ghanaian. So, because of that, I'm here staying with him. So, that is what I can say. <laughs> Being both Ghanaian and Nigerian, can you tell us a little bit about that part of your life and how you ended up choosing to live in Ghana? Okay, so um, let me say eventually I, I was born in Ghana. We are five. I have um, four siblings, including me, making five. So I'm the last born, two boys and then three girls. So um, when I was small, when my dad died, that was uh, when my mom brought us to Ghana. So we live our whole life in Ghana. I school here. So after school, I came to... Um, Kaswa. I was living in the hotel region with my mom. So after school, I came to Kaswa, staying with my elderly sister. So when I was there, you know, hustling for job and to get job. So that was how come um, I met my husband. And uh, we started dating and then courting and eventually got married to and then have beautiful kids. What do you do for work? Mm, for now, I'm not working for the past four years now. I'm not working because of my daughter that I gave birth to. Um, she diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And then heresis gets with high fever and then seizures. So because of that, she's the main reason why I'm able to work again because uh, I can't take her around to the gym, to the stations for training the people. So uh, I have to sit at home taking care of her because I can't carry her all around going up and down because taking care of them, their condition, it's, it demands time. You have to have all the necessary time for them to take care of them. So that is the main reason why I'm in the house, not working, taking care of her. Your decision to stay home and take care of your child is one that is admirable. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Mm. The condition actually is, um, is, is it's very high. It's, it's very difficult to take care of um, a special child. At first, when I gave birth to her, she came with uh, the skin, um, excuse me, she came, the face hall was like kind of an animal. So when she came, I was like, ah, dog. 
this is not a normal human being i've given birth to they're like oh it's normal when you uh, after buffing the child the child will be okay and i said no this is not a child this is not a baby that i'm carrying this is a different thing altogether because the whole eyes you couldn't figure out the eyes were so later we have to be rushed to the hospital so when we go to the hospital um they said she's normal so it's normal with baby so she'll be okay and that's okay so i came home because that's a first time mom so we we're trying to handle her the skin started peeling because of the skin looks like kind of lizard so we started peeling off we're like, what is going on so that was on the eighth day unfortunately on the eighth day we realized that she had joined this she the skin turned very yellow i mean i, I mean yellow and then immediately started running temperature as high as 41. so we quickly have to rush her to the hospital so when we got there they have to put her under the phototherapy to run some tests on her it's just that unfortunately they couldn't get her veins to exchange blood for her so she was just left like that and we were discharged back home so when i got home <laughs> it was it was so difficult because um, you know you've given birth to a baby and you really want to have your child playing with the child and doing all those kind but I couldn't get that time because always you have to wrap the baby no one has to see the child because of the way the skin was and that time my mom and my husband really stood with me I my mom used to say something he said you can never know someone's capability and so the person gets to a particular point in life where it looks as if there is no hope. That is where you can know. So when I got out, like my mom stood with me. So the skin started peeling off and the discharge, there were a whole lot of discharge from the head to the toe. It was, um, the description is just like, you know, morikoko. That is how the whole thing was. So it was smelling. Really, really smelling. So first me, I didn't even pay attention to it. It was my mom was like, ah, it was like, Joyce. Did you realize something? I said, Mom, what? He said, take note. I don't want to say it. So that was when I realized that mm, my daughter is smelling. The discharge was just too much. When you carry, my, if I carry my daughter, you see the discharge all over the, the dress. So it got to a time we don't have to wear her in the dress again. We just wrap her in the cloth, holding her because of the heat, always running temperature. Temperature. So, ah. When she was three, we realized that always the hands always kept at the back. She wasn't stable. She was not stable sitting down. I mom, what's going on? She was like, she too, she doesn't know what's going on. She has given birth before, but this one looks strange to her. So I left her and I came back to buy I gave birth to her, her, her place. So I came to my husband's place. So four or five months, we realized that no. Always by then, so I didn't know what was seizure. I didn't know that this is called seizure. So she was seizuring when she's actually seizuring. When you're in the next room, you could hear her voice seizuring, the tongue coming out, the whole eyes, the whole body. We took her to uh, one of the hospital. And then when we got there, by then she was seven months. So they said, Madam, um, we did some analyze and then we realized that your child has um, cerebral palsy. I was like, ah, what is cerebral palsy? Because I have no idea what cerebral palsy was. I don't know what is it. So they explain. So to me, I thought it was something normal that maybe later on, a month later, a week later, it will be over. Not knowing. <laughs> so um, it got to a point, the seizure became so high. Every day, temperature 41. So we have to always put it inside water. So we were rushed to another hospital. And then that was how she was admitted in the hospital for three months. We slept in the hospital for three months. Seizuring and then she lost oxygen. She couldn't breathe. So they have to put oxygen on her, you know, sustaining her to come back. And then all of a sudden we realized that she started passing through. Watery stool was just passing like that. So the doctor was like, they gave me a notice and said, Madam, this one dear, your child, <laughs> you have to pray. And I was like, pray for what? I don't believe my child is going. She's not going anywhere because I won't let her go. It was like, it's normal with children like this. They normally pass out at early stage. So that's, and I said, okay. So to me, 
the only thing I believe in is God. So I started praying and then I always anoint her. So I was always there in the hospital, three months, getting to form us. Ah, no, what's going on? So later on, the thing came down and then we were discharged. We came home. That very day we got home, the night, it became so severe again. So we have to be rushed back to the hospital. We were also in the hospital for so many months. And it got to a point where I realized that, no, this is a situation I need to deal with so serious. The skin too was peeling, uncontrollable, seriously. And financially, we went down all our savings. We spent it on her. Got the medication alone, the oxygen alone. We spent it. So I was like, God, there's nothing I can do. At that point, I nearly ran away. Yes. Because I nearly left her in the hospital. Because I'm like, ah, I turn and my family too were not that stable, you know. So I nearly, I said, no, this was a thought that was just coming, just leave her. And then, and I was like, no, when I look at my husband, I said, my husband is so caring person. I can't leave him in this condition. So that challenge was in my mind, leave. This one said, don't go. This one said, leave. I was like, no. So I stood and I called one of my pastors. I said, Joyce, this is your test. You need to pass it. So just stand with this child. So that was how come I stood and that. Uh, Miraculously, the hospital there, one of the doctors came, she was like, woman, I've seen what you're going through. I want to be of help to you. So her medication, she was the one who took care of her medication. So a week later, we were still in the hospital. So the thing became so much. Now I can't, you can't you know when someone is helping you, you don't have to be putting pressure on the person or that. So I, I just had enough. I said, no, this one is enough. So I told one of the doctors if they can discharge us so that we come home. So we came home and then we were handling the whole issue on ourselves. The situation became so hard again. We were referred to another hospital. So we came to a different hospital. There, I had no choice. So I was like, I'm on Facebook. I see people seek for help. So why wouldn't I try? That was my first time stepping out to ask for help. It was so embarrassing, so much embarrassing to, you know, go on Facebook, your face, you put your daughter picture there seeking for help. So by then I have to, so I did a video, my first time, I didn't even tell my husband. So I did a shoot and I was like, I need help. And that day when you see me, it was like, I lost weight. I became so slim, like, you know, so I'm like, I need help. This is my daughter. This is what she's going through. So if I, people started mocking me, like people say, hey, say my hey, Joyce, we know you. What's going on? This, this. So people who support, support, and those who also mock, mocked at me. But I never gave up. So when the help came, we used that for her medication and other things. When you put yourself out there like that, by any chance, did you encounter people that you knew from your past, like your peers, your schoolmates, people that you know? Oh, yes, many of them. My mates, I, I encounter a lot of them. And where the shame came was, you know, someone you went to school with and then they are in a position and you also have your goals, you want to achieve this particular thing and then you stuck at one place because of your child. It was, when I when I saw it and when whenever they called me, they said, ah, Joyce, is this you going through this? It's, it pierced me, it's like, it is, it is, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's so hurting, serious. Seeing your mates, all of you went to school, many of them having this, having kids, you know, in a position that you two you dreamt of, of having them, then you stuck at one place. It is, you can't just imagine. How old is your daughter? She's three years, getting to four years. She can't walk. She can't talk. She can't sit. She can't do anything, eventually even eat it. So the only food she sustained on is Serilac. That is her only food. It got to a point we have to do surgery for her. But with prayers, and you know, she was diagnosed with an ear impediment. She couldn't hear. So we have to solicit one for, to buy an ear aid for her. And, but I joined one platform called Alpha Hour. That was when I joined and two prayers and anointing her miraculously the ear opened and that is a shock to even the person who did the examining on her so she could hear it's just that the only thing she can walk she can sit she can't do anything so imagine the pressure 
carrying her always, backing her. And one of the most difficult parts is for her to smile. I it got to a time, you see this hair, I just cut it last year, October. I have to do dreadlocks because of her. And she was my inspiration for doing that. You know why? I realized that whenever you are playing with her and you are shaking your head, it makes her laugh. Even when she's having seizures, it will just stop. So I did that. So always you see me shaking my hair. Sometimes I hope like that kind of aggressive play. And that's what she like. And but I go to her time and say, no, the money you have to be using to even do the dreadlocks overlocking it. If I use that money to buy medication for you, it will help. So I have to just cut it. So I told her that you say I've cut this hair. It's not because of, I don't want you to be happy. But because of money. And whenever I, where we have gotten to, if I communicate to her, she will understand. She knows if I'm in pain, when I'm sad, she knows. She really knows. Yes. Joyce, you mentioned your husband didn't know the first time that you were asking for funds from the public. So what was his reaction the first time he found out? <sighs> for the first time, when he saw it, and he was, uh, I would say, he was sad. Oh, he was actually sad. Let me use the word sad because to that extent, to go to Facebook to beg for even what to eat, even got to a point, even ourselves, what we even eat in the house was something. Was something. So when he saw you, he was like, ah, Jay, what? And I was like, you should understand me. Even me as a woman. It's shameful to me as a woman to go to the public to be asking for help. But I just forget about who I am as a woman. But I want the best for my child. So I told him that anything I can do except selling my body out, I would do it for my child to be okay. So he understood me. So we, we, he, he, he actually, he doesn't like the post whenever I post it. He doesn't want to watch it because it's 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 so it's so shameful, you understand, and it's made seeing it and all that thing. But eventually he understands, even till today. That's what we do to seek for help. And I want to stop because help is not even coming anymore, okay? Eventually do it, you do the video, people at the point people were insulting me. They said, Oh you you ask, you do this for yourself, and I said no. So one day I got so angry. So I have to do a very live video carrying my child. And people saw it by then. Me even sitting here was grace. Myself, I nearly left. Yes. And my child, on several occasions, even this, um, her birthday, this, this journey, she nearly left. She was going. When she said she was turning blue, the seizures, the skin turned. So when you see the picture, you can't stand, you can't be it. You see that, no, is it this child? And the skin was so unimaginable. It's just that it's so painful to have a child like this taken care of if you don't have the finance support. Children are precious, each in their very own way. And you've mentioned you have some really dark times. Do those dark times involve any regrets at all? <sighs> the answer is no, I've not regretted because one of the things I've realized this child does to me is whenever I'm sad, she has a particular smile she gives. I don't know, and it's, 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 it's just like this, you know, lightning, how light shines. You, even if you carry her, you will feel it when she gives you that smile. I don't know how it's happened. So whenever I see that smile, it's, it's, it makes me understand that I've not regretted having her as my child. And she has been a blessing to me. And one of the things she has caused me to know more is God. First, I, I, I thought I was prayerful, but she came into my life. She made me to know God more, to know God more, to have time for God. That is one of the things, that is the best gift she has given me to know God more. The funny thing about life is that we all end up in the grave, but it's the beginning and the journey that is different for everybody. When would you say it fully settled in your head, the circumstances that you currently are in? Okay, so that was last year when um, uh, our landlady 
call that that her money for rent and the, the money we we're having we we're supposed to use it to pay the rent but because of her medication her seizure medication which is very costly we have to use that money to buy us like no so if we should be sat here where are we going that's the point the thing hit me so much I said no so if i were not to have this condition this wouldn't happen but you know this is the situation and at that particular moment there was not even food to eat i'm telling you yes and i called someone that was close to me i said please can you borrow me 50 cities the first question she asked me is your husband not there i shed tears it hits me so much it was so embarrassing because you know in this life people feel when you are married you have it all so you don't need to be asking on those things the thing hit me i was like no i can't take it anymore it's, it's okay so that was when i just <laughs> this world What are the doctors now saying about her illness and what are your plans towards that? Okay, so um, for the doctor's plan, for now, eventually we're going to almost four hospitals. The big hospitals we should know about. <laughs> we can't. They said there is nothing that can be done. Last year we were supposed to even take her to the US for treatment. But the money they mentioned was so huge. So we couldn't. So right now my stand here is i say doctors have given up on her but i have not given up on her i see her very soon being made whole so i'm not going to take care of her as a sick person or as such condition because there's not only one condition she's going through four conditions at the same time one person so my plan now is i love fitness that is what i love doing and I'm going to pursue it and aside that establish myself in certain things because um, now when you have a child with cerebral palsy and you are even selling something people don't want to buy because I've tried it yes people don't want to buy your things and you see sometimes mothers even complaining they don't want to buy so actually plan of uh, going back to my fitness if it will cause me to even carry her there or even do it online. However, I just have to do it because I wish I can even carry on my head to sell because I've tried it before. That is point. I wish I can carry it to go and sell, but I can't. And the other brother too. So it's that is my plan for now. Just seeing her made whole. Then I continue my life. But apart from that, it means eventually I'm going to sit at home taking care of her. For the rest of but apart from that my faith tells me she'll be fine did your daughter's illness have any impact on your marriage <sighs> um let me say um that point since she the whole thing started a new life started we started having arguments because of the stress but this one is stress this one is also stress you see it started to be worse but God in his own ways we try to you know put things in place not to and where sometimes it affects is my stepson I have a stepson where sometimes the whole shout goes on him goes on him so you see eventually the whole thing pressure is going to him and at a point it nearly cost nearly <laughs> cost our marriage but i thank the almighty god for sustaining us because i am blessed to have such a man if not by the grace of god he would have lived me long ago because of the condition because most women their husbands are no more with them but me i'm fortunate i'm blessed to have him again with me and he has been very supportive because sometimes he goes to school early as early by six he has to take care of her and have to take care of the other one he will be stressed go come back he has to help me because i too when i'm in the house i have to carry something i have to carry my coffee here carry the small one here feeding the two of them at the same time 
at a point I have to break down. But with that love supporting me, it's it's keeping us going. You are a brave and courageous woman for what you've been through and for what you continue to do for your daughter. And there are lots of people that are watching you right now who are also going through a similar situation and wondering, I mean, what to do next with themselves. What words of encouragement do you have for such people? Okay, so what I can say now is, anyone watching you right now, before you want to give up on your life, watch me because I've not given up. Because having a child suffering from four conditions at the same time and still standing with God, you shouldn't give up. At a point, you feel like even killing yourself. You feel like running away. You feel like running from everybody. You want to be alone. But just watch yourself. If you are still breathing, that gives you hope. And that is enough for you to give what your, the best to your life. Because you might kill yourself. But life still goes on. By you killing yourself doesn't mean that the situation is over. Someone is still going on the same thing what you are facing. So never give up. Keep on. Strive hard. And one of the worst encouragement I can give you is keep the word of God inside of you. Because it never breaks. And one of the scriptures that keeps me going is Jeremiah 23, 29. He said, his word is like a hammer. It's like a fire that breaks every rock into pieces. So that word always keeps me going. And that is what has brought me to this far. If not, I would have given up. I would have given up. So don't give up. There is hope. And the future is bright with Christ. If only you are accepting into your heart. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you so very much for those words of encouragement, Joyce. You're welcome. And I hope and I pray that your circumstances do get better. Amen. And what you have done here is phenomenal, sharing your story the way you have. Thank you, and thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> this show seeks to remind us that everyone has a story, and these stories can offer wisdom, provoke thought, provide comfort and community, and in the case of Joyce, remind you that if you win the battle today, then you live to fight for tomorrow. The ultimate aim is to inspire and educate. And also highlight the remarkable human capacity for growth and adaptation because life twists and turns can lead to unexpected destinations where we'll definitely ask ourselves, how did I get here? Cheer you guys. Supported by Order and Ease Delivery Only Restaurant and Short Professional Courses from the League of Entrepreneurs. Before we get started, here's a little something our lawyers insisted we share with you. The thoughts and words and stories of our guests belong solely to them. If you decide to act on anything you hear about today, unless it benefits our guests, or us, or both, please leave us out of it. With that covered, let's jump into the world of how did I get here. The day before the finale, when I came back from campus, my gown wasn't there, including other people's dresses I had to go and get there for their presentation. They were all not there. Not knowing my mom had taken all because she didn't want me to do the pageant. She was like, really? I cried till the next day. There were some people I wished I never met because it's like, even though I went through a lot at the age of 12 years, I was still going to school and still learning how to sew. Do you get it? I felt like it was a good experience, but going to the extent of meeting people is like, they are cool with you. It's like, they want the best for you. They want you to get whatever you need in life. But deep down, they don't support what you do. They want to bring you down. Hello. Hi. It's 
good to have you here. Thank you. I hope you are good and you're ready. I'm ready. That's great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so Lianjinali Okuno is my name. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a fashion designer and a student. I'm also a Ghanaian, but a little of foreign breed in me. Yeah. So that's what I can say for now. Can you tell us about the little bit of foreign that is in you? Okay, so my mom is not a Ghanaian, but my dad is a Ghanaian. Yeah. And where's your mom from? She's from Switzerland. Is that why your face is shaped a little bit foreign? <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. Maybe. <laughs> Let's dive into your family. How's the family dynamics like? Okay, so I actually grew up with a single parent. My mom, my dad died when I was, I think, one year old. Yeah, so I've been with my mom my entire life till now. And I have four siblings, including me, so five. And I'm the last born. Yeah, and I'm very close to my mom. So I'm normally called mommy's daughters. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to assume I know what that means at all. <laughs> Did you and your mom have discussions about your dad? Yeah, when I was growing up, my mom told me. And it really hit me when I was growing up because I think going to school and while I was schooling, because my dad was a custom officer, most of the students that come around, their dads come to pick them up and other stuff. So I, I sometimes sit aside and be like, why? Why me? Why is it that I don't have a dad to come and pick me up every single day to tell me, baby, I love you? Or maybe um, he's always there for me, the way they come to pick their children up, send them out and all those things. Yeah, it's like my mom was the only one there. So your mom has been there the whole time? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Hmm. A little sometimes I feel sad for her, maybe the suffering aspects, but sometimes I also feel happy having a mom like that because she's very hardworking and determined to keep us. You mentioned the suffering bit. Yeah, so a lot of the time, if you have two parents, let's say maybe your mom is going to take some parts, your dad is also going to take some parts, but here lies the case, everything is on her, you know? And being at your eating, your schooling, your school fees, we are going to wear, everything is going to be on her. And if you set aside and you see my mom from a distance, you see sometimes she thinks a lot. And it's one thing that breaks me down when I see her like that. Have you had discussions with her on this? If you try talking to her like that, it makes her very emotional. So anytime I see her very emotional like that, I make sure every night I check on her if she's breathing. Because <laughs> if she becomes too emotional, she cries a lot, you know. And it's one thing that oh, you would see that it's really painful. It's understandably harder to move on after the passing of a husband. Have you seen her made any attempt to move on with someone else? No. She says she doesn't want to because of us. She doesn't want us to maybe meet another person and maybe there's going to more treat us and other stuff. So she wants to get time to work to take care of us. But would you want her to settle down with someone else? <laughs> okay, if I had someone who was really determined to take care of us, like a dad, that's going to be okay. But most of the way my mom was speaking from her perspective you can see that most of the guys that come around they come because she has her own house she has her own thing so they just want to come in you know so she doesn't want to get married how's your relationship with your siblings like they are very cool very very cool <laughs> yeah oh that's good to hear tell me about school okay school school is fine school is nice but just that i normally get little challenges in school that's because I'm not a she's my friend type, like befriending females. I always want to be around males. Yeah. Now, how did that come about? Okay, so I've looked at certain things, and I think when way back in SHS, I had this female friend, and I was willing to actually give everything I had because I felt friends being there for you is one thing that if you are down, it's going to help you because I was also the down type. So, I helped them and everything, but it got to a time, it's like, they were back back, they were three girls, you know, yeah, but two actually turned their back on me, and, and even that was my first time befriending females, because way back, I think in JHS, I was only with males, I eat with males, I work with males, everything with males. What are some of the things that they said behind your back? They said, me, I feel my mom is a white, and I'm too new, um, they said one thing that really hurts me. They said I listen to what they say and go and tell other people, which was wrong. 
the two who actually took their parts one was the one doing that yes so i think later when we came to university before they discovered that but at that time i had moved on so and i wasn't ready to because i was anybody i assume you have a lot of male friends now yeah a lot and are they friends 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 so male friends and guan male friends no female friends oh no 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 female friends no okay yeah i think i have one one female i met her in the university yeah mariam she's a muslim but i think she also moved from our place so our school so she's no more there so now i work alone unless my male friends come around then yeah. so what are some of the experiences that shaped your time in school so i'm often fashion designing okay in school and because i'm not a friendly type in school, i'm very friendly but to the females i'm not because i don't want them to get the chance to speak to me or to talk about me in the ones but not knowing that i was wrong even though i don't talk to them i don't give them the chance to get closer to me they talk a lot they talk a lot being in my dressing being in the way i speak being in the way i'm through my lectures and other stuff they still talk about it did you go deep into the fashion yes 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 so i went into a pageantry because of what i was going through at the point of seeing my mom always down and stuff i felt okay i had a dream of becoming a model you know i liked working i like doing styles even not on camera so i felt okay then there's my chance to grab this so that i can do it get far so i got this opportunity and this opportunity i got my mom was in agreement with it she didn't want me to get into pageantry because she felt pageantry was you know a whole lot of things you expose your body and stuff so i tried to convince her but she didn't give her mind to me so well, i think a day before our finale she took my gown and everything because i sold my own gown I was a fashion designer. I didn't want anybody to sew my gown for me. So they gave my material and stuff and I went to sew it at home. So I think the following day when I came, the day before, yeah, the day before the finale, when I came back from campus, my gown wasn't there, including other people's dresses I had to go and give for their presentation. They were all not there. Not knowing my mom had taken all because she didn't want me to do the pageant. She was like, really? I cried till the next day and I decided not to stay home. I thought maybe a way could come around I would still participate in it. So even living home because she took my she took everything, my money, my everything. So I didn't even get um uh, what's the name? Lori Fair to go to campus or something. So I called one of my male friends and he helped me out. So when he sent me the money and everything, I went to campus, when I was left in my gown, I was going to wear my heel. If I'm to change all my makeup, my hair, and those the contestants who were having their dresses with me for their presentation, so I was confused. So thanks be to God, okay, the contestants had other things they were to wear, and when it came when it came to me, it became a problem. You know, it became a very huge problem for me. So my male friends that I had, they were the one who volunteered and contributed to go and buy a new cloth for me. So at that point, I, I, I couldn't sew, I couldn't do anything. So what came into my, I had to do dripping. And the dripping, it's likely, I'm wearing heels. And the heel is only like four inches, five inches. So what if I step on the dripping? Because it's all with pins and stuff. So I was still thinking that I had no option to do dripping. So we didn't do it after we did whatever I wanted. I just did a dripping. And even though I was going on this, I was still afraid that my gown would understand because my hair was long <laughs> so during everything we went we went so i think when they were about to choose we we're 20 so they had to move 10 and the 10 that was 10 males 10 females so they would take five five you know so when they took the five five from it i think the first five girls were taken i was part i was like wow that's how my mom say she be like, into no choir, 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 choir. Do you get it? So I was really down, but fortunately for me, they actually called me back and they brought someone else and they were evicted. So I was left with five, five. I was there, yeah, first round up, I didn't hear my name. Second round up, even most eloquent, no. Most talented, no. Nothing. So I just felt, 
that was it so i just i was just in a hurry to leave the stage i felt they should just call the queen and there were two girls ahead of me and i thought no those two girls did well not even asking girl i thought they were very intelligent so i thought maybe they were they would be taken either as a queen or something so i was there they were mentioning <laughs> I was there, they just mentioned my name as a queen. I didn't know what to do. I just started crying because I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it at all. I wasn't. So, that was how it Yeah. When you go back home, what was waiting for you? <laughs> my mom was giving me attitudes. She was like, she didn't send me to go and do it. Even my gifts and stuff, they gave to me in the room those who supported us and stuff she said she won't touch anything because she didn't tell me to go and do it and at that point they gave me um a scholarship and uh, they gave me two thousand at yeah she was like she won't touch it a whole lot but i just felt it's it's because it's fresh but as time goes so she's gonna understand because i didn't come back in vain no because there was something i was going to help at least my school fees will be paid for a year and that money that's for a year it can actually do something so so she still doesn't support your dream for fashion no she does what changed her mind i don't know if she's the one who took my money from me okay so you managed to convince your mom about the fashion but what about the modeling when it comes to them, the modeling car she doesn't support it that much she feels it's about exposing your body you know yeah but i also feel i want to i want it to be like something that can empower people Something that can impact something into people, not mainly you exposing your body. Do you get it? That's what I really want to do now. So that she would know it wasn't because I wanted to expose my body, but I wanted to do something good out of that. Do you have any plan for if she doesn't come around on the modeling? Oh well, if she doesn't, I'll just abide by her things, her rules, her everything. Yeah. You'll be willing to sacrifice all that? Yeah. And I'll focus on my fashion designer. Really? Okay, my question is, if you're willing to sacrifice it right now, then why didn't you do that when she was against her during the pageantry? Because at that point, I had no option than to do it. Because we had done our grooming for the past weeks, and it was just one night ahead. And if I was to take myself out, there would be one person missing. And it wouldn't be possible for you to go on like that. So I just had to do it. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Do you have any backup careers aside the fashion and the modeling? Yeah, nursing. Do you plan to blend fashion, modeling, and nursing? Yes. When it comes to the nursing, I've not yet started. I'll be schooling. I'll start schooling maybe next year. But the the way I think I can add up all those three things is for now. I've started an agency, and that agency I feel I have people, siblings who are really trusted that I can put them on that side to help me out. And when it comes to the fashion, the fashion is not an everyday thing. I do that at night, yes, and I don't go to campus every single day. So I feel I can put a fashion down for some time, pursue my nursing. When I'm done, I'll pick up together, and I know I can do that. You are very well articulated, and you've been able to paint a picture for us to see how life growing up as Lillian has been. What would you say are some bad experiences that stood out from your childhood up till now? Meeting certain people in my life. How so? There are some people I wish I never met. Because it's like, even though I went through a lot at the age of 12 years, I was still going to school and still learning how to sew. Do you get it? I felt like it was a good experience, but going to the extent of meeting people is like, they are cool with you. It's like, they want the best for you. They want you to get whatever you need in life. But deep down, they don't support what you do. They want to bring you down. And it's one thing that I, I dislike. I wish I never met certain people like that because I met one girl who was willing to help me out. Yeah, I, I think I wanted to start this agency some time ago, but I didn't have people to support because when I started, they, they want it to be money, money, you get it. But I was looking for people who were determined, people who were ready to work with me without thinking of the payments now. Like an agency? It's something like a modeling agency, but not mainly modeling. I want to do mentorship, I want to do ushering, I want to do the modeling, and also the running okay. And you found a supporting friend? Yes. So she told me she was ready to help me out, telling me a whole lot, motivating me. She knows I can do it. 
everything not knowing she was also sitting with her friends telling them how she wanted to bring me down you get it so i think when i started some time ago she was the one who spoiled everything I me mean, i even discovered it when everything was spoiled and her friend she spoiled me to became close to me and she saw i was a cool person i was a nice person so she's the one who exposed everything to me and how my things went down and i was like oh Lisa, i advised myself and even though I was heartbroken, I felt I don't have to let that bring me down. So I have to build up upon myself. Because my mom always tells me that the way she has, she has been a good woman to support us. I don't think I want to grow up and maybe if... I'm not saying that should happen. But in case my husband passes away or something, I can also take care of my children. So I felt okay, then let me just stand up, do whatever I want. Because if my mom has five children... And she's able to cater for every single of them. How much more just a single me? Without children, without anyone. I'm being taken care of. So I just picked myself up. Kept things together. And these same male friends I have, they are the same people who helped me out. And so now there are still people helping me out. Okay. You just mentioned your male friends help you out. Are you dating? <laughs> yeah. Does your mom know you're dating? Yes. She's fully aware. Yes. Is that am I dating? I was. Yeah. Yes. Okay, was dating and your mom knew about it. Was your mom okay with you dating? Yeah, she was okay. She feels um Akolano Uka turns a man in your cry, she would do it. She gets it. So she feels it's better she gets closer to you, know what to do and advise you on what you're doing, so that maybe you don't bring problems to yourself. But she's not gonna tell you to stop. Because she knows Okacha will say Jaika, you still do it. There's a perceived notion that foreign parents are encouraging of their kids. They give the leeway for experimentation and communicate quite well with their kids. Is that your experience with your white mom? Okay, my mom, she's strict sometimes, you know. Yes. But I, I always tell my friends, it's those who came out of money, like my aunties and other people, one who's kind of her. So... She doesn't see if her child is too far right now. She knows obviously I'm a pigeon. You get it. But when it comes to my aspect, my mom feels you have to train the child. Only now when you have cramp, she can still live. You get it. So if she is to be too linear with it, like do whatever you want, she will not talk, blah, blah, blah. She's going to feel she's not a good parent. So when it gets to my relationship like this, she she told me everything that could come out of it. She even told me guys cannot be trusted. Yeah, she told me. And she she told me a whole lot. But she she said that doesn't mean I'm not going to get married or that doesn't mean I'm not going to get into a relationship with anybody. Yeah. So she told me that at my age I will see a lot of guys out there who are going to be nice, who are going to be caring, all sort of things. But I should really be careful, of course. So she's not she's not that strict. Your last relationship. How was that? I met this guy in uni, okay, and I felt he was matured enough because apart from schooling, he had other things he was doing. So, he was one person, okay, fine, I could talk to He was also going through a lot, so I felt I could understand him because according to my friends, his past relationship was hectic. So, I decided, okay, then I understand certain things. We also go through a lot so we can keep things moving. Everything was okay. Everything was fine. Until one day he started acting weird and I didn't do him anything. His friends even bear witness that I didn't do him anything, but it seems he started acting weird. So I asked him what was wrong and he was like, he doesn't like it when his girlfriend is around guys, like most of her friends are guys. And I was like, really? So I asked my brother that is it bad for, you know, and my brother was like, he, to him, he doesn't see any problem with it. That's if only you know you really trust the girl. And I was like, okay. So I didn't talk on that. And I asked him later on and he was like, he doesn't like when his girlfriend is always around him. And I asked, <laughs> I asked other guys, even my friends, that this and this and this and this. And they were like, no, there's no guy out there who would say his girlfriend, he doesn't want his girlfriend to be around him because if you really love your girlfriend or you really want her to be beside you, every time they are, no, no person won't change. I was like, okay, so at that point, I just thought maybe he had someone else apart from me. Yes, so I'm like, I'm not going to fight over that. So I asked him if he wants to leave or he wants us to, and he was like, he wants us to go on a break. 
So like, which big time is this? So, if that's the case, he should just say whatever he wanted to say. If maybe he wants us to break up or something so that I can leave myself and keep moving. Then, he didn't want to say anything. So I think two days later, I wasn't replying his text. I wasn't, I wasn't even getting the text to even reply. <laughs> so, I texted him and I was asking how he was and he was delaying my text and stuff. So I asked him if he wants to break. I should just say that he was like, yeah, you should break. I was like, fine, no problem. And I left. So now, I feel it's okay. I just have to focus on myself and build myself. Well, you definitely did type to him like a hard girl. But underneath all that, did you feel any emotional pain? I felt it. Yeah, I felt good. So I think since I was getting better, I had not dated. Yeah, I dated one. But now I wouldn't say it was a date because it's like you meeting someone who really cares about you and you guys just move. Yes. So he was one person. Yeah, he was caring. He was generous. And he made me feel no matter what, he was there. So I didn't know why all of a sudden he just changed towards me. So that was one that really hurt me. But apart from that, I was cool. Would you say that your childhood, how you grew up, your family dynamics would have an influence on your own family one day? No. Are you putting anything in place to ensure that? Because my mom has always been supportive one, you understand? And she always wants to see us happy. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for us. So I don't have any plans of putting those things in because she's not going to cause any problem. What words would you like to share with your dad if you were here right now? That I really love him and I really wish I could spend every single moment I had with him. Because I heard a whole lot about him but I never got a chance to experience that. Even my own siblings tell me a whole lot about him but I didn't get a chance. There are many cultures all around the world that believe that the dead might be passed but they are not gone and that they live amongst us. They hear and see whatever we do. It is my honest belief and hope that your dad just heard the words that you said and it is my wish that that gives you some solace and I wish you all the best. Thank you for coming. You've been fantastic. Come. I would like to reiterate that the show is a reminder that everyone has a story and that these stories can provide wisdom, they can provoke thought, and most importantly for us, for those that share a connection with our guests, they provide a sense of community and comfort. So as much as we inspire and we educate and we hope to highlight some of the remarkable human capacities for growth and adaptation, we also hope that as you watch this show, it helps you navigate the twists and the turns of life as you ask yourself, how did I get here? Cheer you guys. Supported by Order and Ease Delivery Only Restaurant and Shots Professional Courses from the League of Entrepreneurs. Hey.